morning. Good morning. If you have your Bibles, turn to Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. day that God's gave us, another time to be in his house. And as always, we hope you've already prayed. If not, we ask to understand your prayers this morning. So if you found your place, Matthew chapter 8, I want to start reading at verse 5. Matthew chapter 8, starting at verse 5. The scripture says, And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion beseeching him, and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. But speak, thy, speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall not shall be cast into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so it be done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. We'd ask you, if you would, to bow your heads. Father, again, we thank you for another day you've given. Yes. We thank you, Lord, yes. for your precious word. And, yes. uh, Father, once again, just guide us with what needs said. Lord, we pray that you would encourage where you need to encourage. And, Lord, convict where you need to convict. And, uh, Father, just uh, be with the message as it goes out, Lord. And, again, we thank you, we praise you, and we ask all these things in Christ's name. And amen. Amen. Jesus responds to faith, not worthiness. Jesus responds to faith, not worthiness. In this uh, eighth chapter of Matthew, we read the story where he comes to Capernaum and uh, a centurion comes into him and says, listen, one of my servants is sick. And that Christ says, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. Uh, folks, listen. If it come to worthiness, Christ wouldn't have visited this man's servant, Sandy. He was a Roman soldier. Uh, hardly, he was an occupier in a country that didn't uh, want him there. That's right. Uh, he no doubt, uh, when need necessitated, uh, would punish Jews that didn't follow the Roman uh, rule of law and was universally hated. But here Christ had said, listen, I'll come and I'll, I'll heal him. But the man says, listen, I'm not worthy that you should come to my house, but just speak the word and it'll be done. Right. Uh, folks, listen. Jesus responds to faith, not worthiness. And there's a lot of people that don't understand that they listen. He responds to faith and not worthiness. Yeah. You know why? Because there's none that's worthy. Yeah, that's right. There that's is right. none that's worthy. Uh, Romans chapter three, uh, round verse ten, I believe, it says there is uh, none good, no, not one. Right. 
That's right. There's none good, no, not one. Uh, Romans that 23, 23 says, For all have sinned yes. and come short of the glory of God. Amen. So guess what, folks? There is none that is worthy. Right. Well, listen, I've been a good man. I've been a good woman. I've did this and I've did that. Well, I hate to bust your bubble. Yeah, yeah. But Titus 3, 5, not by works of righteousness, which yeah. we have done, but according to his mercy, Amen. hath he saved us. Amen. Through the washing of regeneration, through the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Folks, listen, there is none that's worthy. That's right. Right. Doug isn't worthy. That's right. That's right. Uh, whatever other preacher you want to pick, yeah. I hate to bust your bubble. Yeah. They wasn't worthy. Amen. Mommy Amen. and daddy wasn't worthy. Amen. Grandma and grandpa wasn't worthy. Amen. That's right. Folks, there's none that was worthy. Yeah. Revelation chapter 5, you recall, uh, as John is caught up to, to see the sight in heaven, and he sees this book that's sealed with seven seals, Becky. Yeah. And it says that a, a, a strong angel called out, Who's worthy to open the book? And it said that there was no man in heaven, nor in earth, nor under the earth, that was able to open the book or to even look thereon. And it said, I wept much because there was no man that was found worthy that could open the book or to look thereon. But it said that he, he told him, said, Look behind you. Behold the line of the tribe of Judah. And Harley, when he looked behind him, you know what he saw? He saw a lamb that had been slain. Folks, you want to know who's worthy? The lamb is worthy. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man isn't worthy, but the lamb is worthy. It said that the lamb was able to open the book and to loose the seals thereof, and that they began to praise him that he was worthy to open the book. But folks, listen. Man isn't worthy. Right. And folks, I don't care. Listen, I, Bill, I joke. I call my mom St. Mary. <laughs> but she wasn't worthy. That's right. Amen. I had That's right. the best grandmother. Sure, sure. Amen. Grandmothers. I should yeah. say grandmothers. Bless you. Uh, Bill, I'm so blessed. Yes, yes. And, and there are people, and, and Sandy, that there are people, they've just took for granted how yeah. blessed they were. Yes, right. right. And how Amen. they grew up. Amen. But folks, my my grandparents wasn't worthy. My great grandparents right. wasn't right. worthy. All the godly people that I knew growing yes. up, guess yes. what, Jessica? They wasn't worthy. Amen. Folks, not a one of you is worthy. That's right. Amen. Amen. Oh, preacher, talking about me again? Yeah. yeah. The truth. The truth. Stop wearing glass slippers to church. Yeah. <laughs> folks, no one is worthy. Amen. Amen. But you know what Christ responds to? He doesn't respond to worthiness. He responds to faith. Yes. Amen. He responds to faith. Uh, faith that he can save the world. He responds to those that have faith that he can save the world. Uh, John 1, probably around 28, 29, somewhere in there, said that uh, as Christ comes to John the Baptist, he said, Behold the Lamb of God, yeah. which is able to take away the sins of the world. Yeah. Folks, no one else had been able to do that. Mm -hmm. And yet here John said, listen, behold someone who's able to save the world. Yeah. But you know what John's attitude was? Listen, I'm not worthy. You all have tried to prop me up. And Harry, that's the problem. There are people, there are churches, they've tried to prop people up. Right. That guess what? They wasn't worthy. And I'm talking about good churches have done that. That's right. Matthew 3.11, I believe, said that John told him, said, I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but there is one that cometh after me who is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, and he will baptize you with fire. Folks, John the Baptist didn't feel like he was worthy. Right. And Christ said, listen, there was no one born of woman greater than John the Baptist. Yep. So if John the Baptist wasn't worthy, yep. why would we think we're worthy? Amen. Amen. But Harley, here's the thing. John had faith. He had yep. faith. Yes. That guess what? This guy that's coming after me, he's going to fix all this. <laughs> if you'll let him. If you'll let him. Yep. 
Yeah. Well, folks, he, he responded to, to ones that have faith that he could save the world. He responds to those that have faith to follow. Yeah. That have faith to follow him. Uh, Luke chapter 5, I believe. You recall he'd been preaching and, and he uh, uh, gets on Simon's boat and he says, uh, Cat, launch out to the deep and cast out thy nets for a drop. And it said that they had fished all night. Yep. And Simon told him, said, Master, we've fished all night, but nevertheless, at thy word, right. I'll do it. Yep. Joe, he said, oh, you know, this Yahoo, he's going to tell me how to fish. I'm a pro at this. But you know what? I'll humor you. I'll humor you. I'll go out. And he does what he says. And what happens? Yep. They catch so many fish, their boat starts to sink. He asked to call James and John to come help him. Both boats are almost ready to sink. They come to land. And it said that Christ or that Peter fell down at Jesus' feet and said, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. Yeah. Harley, here was a man that uh, he was an established businessman. <laughs> He was probably pretty important in that community. But when he saw the power of Christ, he said, guess what? I ain't worthy to be right. around you. I ain't depart from me. But Christ recognizes, responds to faith for those that will follow him. He said, listen, from henceforth, thou shalt catch men. You come follow me and you'll be, you'll be fishers of men. And it said that when they brought their boats back to land, they forsook all mm -hmm. and followed it. Amen. Folks, what does Jesus respond to? He responds to those that have faith to follow him. Right. Folks, there ain't a lot of following today. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. There ain't a lot of following today. There's occasionally meeting. <laughs> Yeah. There's a uh, using them like Tylenol. <laughs> yeah. True. No, amen or out. Yes, amen. When I'm hurting, when I'm in trouble, yes. then I'll call on you. But you know what? There's not a lot of following hard. Right, right. There's not, but, but he, he recognizes and responds to those that have faith to follow. Okay. He responds to those have, that have faith to reach out to him. He responds to those that have faith to reach out to him. Uh, Mark chapter 4, I believe. You remember the story of the woman with the issue of blood? Said that uh, for 12 years she had had this uh, condition and that she had spent all that she had on many physicians and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Yeah. And folks, let me explain. This woman would have been an outcast, Becky. She wouldn't have been considered clean. She couldn't have been associated with everybody else in, in the market or whatever. She had to go and do her shopping by herself. She had to go down to the, to the creek to wash her, her stuff by herself. She was considered unclean. She wasn't worthy to be around. But she hears that Christ is in town. She says, you know what? If I can but just touch his garment, right. I'll be made whole. Jonathan, she wasn't worthy. She was an outcast. She had problems. She was unclean. But you know what she had? She had faith. Yes, amen. Listen, amen. if I can but just touch his garment, right. I'll be made whole. Folks, there isn't a lot of people reaching out to him. True, true. For faith to be made whole. They reach out for the bottle. They reach out for drugs. They reach out for sex. They reach out for other people. They reach out for this and that. You know what Christ responds to? <laughs> Those that reach out yeah. to him. Right. Those that reach out to him. She wasn't worthy, Harley. If she had had to go through the screening process, Mary, you know, uh, it's not like we can just go up to old Uncle Joe. <laughs> at the White House and say, yeah, I want to talk to you. <laughs> They're going to turn you away. And folks, even the governors, 
even the dignitaries, guess what? Sandy, same thing. If he doesn't have time for you, mm -hmm. try again later. Yeah, that's right. But folks, when you reach out to Christ in faith, yes. Now you got to reach out to him in faith. Right. You can't just be like blindly grabbing in the dark. It's got to be, you know what? He's here and he can help. Yeah. But I got to get him. There are people that have stopped reaching out today. Mm -hmm. That's all right. They don't have a desire to reach out to Christ. Now they'll reach out for all these other things, but they won't reach out to Christ. He responds to those that have faith that, you know what? He loves me in spite of who I am. That's right. Amen. Amen. Man, we're just busting all your all's bubbles today. <laughs> Folks, Jesus don't love you because of who you are. Right. He loves you in spite That's right. of who you are. Right. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. And if you have the faith that, you know what, he loves me in spite of all the warts, in spite of all the blemishes, in spite of all the problems, yeah. that's what he responds to. Right. John chapter 4, you recall, he, he stops at the well. And the Samaritan woman is there gathering her water. And he says, give me a drink. And we won't go through the whole thing, but basically he says, listen, why are you talking to me? Yeah. You Jews have nothing to do with us Samaritans. That's right. Well, if you knew who it was that was talking to you, you'd be asking me for a drink, yes. and I'd give you a living. Amen. Water. That's right. And the conversation continues, and then he, he tells her, well, listen, go call thy husband and bring him here. And said, she said, I have no husband. Said that Christ said, thou hast verily said, thou, you've truly said that you have no husband, because you know what? You've had five husbands. And the one that you're with now... Is not your husband. Right, right. Eventually, the woman goes back to the town, Jessica, and she says, You know what? I found the Messiah. He's told me everything that I ever did. Yes. Folks, guess what? Christ knows everything that you've ever did. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Mom and dad may not know everything that you ever did. That's right. That's right. Your spouse may not know right. everything that you ever did. That's right. Your children may not know everything right. that you've ever did, but guess what? Yeah. Folks, Christ knows everything Amen. that you've ever done. Amen. And he loves you in spite of that. Yes. Amen. This woman was a Samaritan. She was a woman. I mean, that he would even be bothered to talk to a woman yeah. in public. She was, <laughs> had been married five times. Yeah. She was with someone that wasn't her husband right. now. Folks, listen, she had been an adulterer. Yeah. She had been a fornicator. Yeah. She was living a lie. Yeah. But yet, here this man loves her enough to say, you know what? I'll give you a living one. Amen. If you ask. Folks, that's the kind of faith that Jesus responds to. Yes. Amen. Not whether you're worthy. Again, Harley, she wasn't worthy. That's all right. That's all right. By by even the, the loosest terms, yes. she wasn't worthy. And when his disciples come back and they seen him talking to her, they didn't say anything, Joe. But that's the first thing that went through their head is man. Yeah. Does he know who he's talking to? Why is he bothering sitting here with this woman? Same reason he sits with you. Yes. Amen. Same reason he talks to you and me. That's right. Amen. Because he loves us in spite of. Yes. Not because of. But folks, he responds to faith. Okay. He responds to those that have faith to confess their sins. He responds to those that have faith to confess their sins. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Yep, that is the doornail, Jessica. Yep. Couldn't do anything to hurt me, Bill. That's right. 
Now, if I fell on it and broke it in two, some splinters probably pierced my big old fat belly. But Danny, there isn't a thing to be scared of with this. True. But Mike, it casts fear throughout churches across the land. Right. Amen. <laughs> you know why it casts fear? Because if I come up there and use it, yeah. what will everybody think? Right. What will they wonder about what I've done? Yeah. What will they start saying about me? But folks, Jesus responds to those that have faith to confess their sin. Yeah. And again, folks, listen, you can come to the altar and you may not have anything to confess. You may just be burdened for your loved ones. That's right. But Harley, that's the sad thing. We talk about being, bur being burdened for our loved ones and our friends, but yet this is still empty. If it's that troubling, then why aren't we doing something about it? Amen. Bless him, Lord. Well, that's Doug's job. <laughs> we'll let the preacher pray for him. We'll let the pastor intercede. Okay. But folks, listen. If you're willing to confess your sins, then guess what? That's the kind of faith that he responds to. That's right. Amen. When Nathan come to David... And he told him the story, and David said, you know what, I've sinned against the Lord. You know what Nathan told him? Joe, he said, the Lord's put away your sin. He's done forgave you, David. Because he doesn't know what happened, even though nobody else did. But there's consequences that you're going yes. to have to pay. That's right. But David was willing to confess his sins. Folks, Paul was willing to confess his sins. Right. 2 Timothy 1.15, I believe. He says, This is a faithful saying and worthy of all ex 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 accepted. You know, I know he's watching Looney Tunes. Well. <laughs> this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Right. If we ain't made you mad enough, let's try a little again. <laughs> Bless him. Folks, Paul was better than you all. <laughs> all right. Let Bless the hair him. go back down on your neck. Now listen. <laughs> he was a master of the law. Yes. Harley, he was faithful to show up at God's house. Right, right. He talked to God on a regular basis. But on the road to Damascus, he found out, guess what? I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Lord, I have sinned against you. Now, folks, if David can say that, if Paul can say that, why can we not say right, that? Right, right, right. Folks, that's what he responds to. He responds to those that have faith that can say, you know what? I need you, Lord. I've messed up. I can't do this on my own. He responds to faith, not worthiness. Mm -hmm. That's what Paul said. Listen, I ain't worthy. Yeah. I've persecuted the church. Yeah. I've did horrible, unspeakable things to those that have accepted you, Lord. But that's what he told Ananias, that he's a chosen vessel. Yes. Amen. Folks, listen, you're a chosen vessel yes. unto Christ. That's right. Now, I don't know what kind of vessel you are. Maybe you're a coffee cup. <laughs> Maybe you're a gravy bowl. Maybe you're a big old pot. But, folks, you're a chosen vessel. Yes, amen. amen. For God to take him to others. It has nothing to do with your worthiness. What it has to do with is your faith. You've got to be willing to be used. Okay? But he responds to those that have faith to come back to Father's house. He responds to those that have faith to come back to Father's house. Luke 15. You all know the story of the prodigal son, right? We won't go through all the beginning. 
But we'll, we'll jump to the part that says that where he came to himself. Right. He had got to the point, Jessica, that he said, you know what? I would like to eat this slop that I'm feeding to the hogs. But no man will even give me that. But how many of my father's hired servants have food to spare? Yeah. And I sit here and perish. Yeah. He said, this I'll do. I'll arise and go to my father and say, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. Folks, there was nothing worthy about this man. Joe, he had forsaken his father. Yeah. He had went to, to live in the world. Yeah. He had suffered the consequences of living in the world. Yes, that's right. And now he's going to come back and say, listen, I'm not worthy to be part of the family. Just make me as one of the servants. Right. But it's said that the father saw him afar off. And ran out and hugged and kissed him. Yeah, that's right. And it said that he said, Father, I'm no more worthy to be called thy son. I've sinned against heaven and against thee. And we go through that, but folks, do you know the order of that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Mike, the father, ran out to him before he ever said that. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, if he was just going by worthiness, Sandy, he said, listen... <laughs> Forget you, I've got one of these kids that actually did what I said. Hardly we used to tell that to R3. That's why I used to tell them, listen, I got two other just like you. <laughs> you want to act stupid? That's fine. I got two other hopefuls here. But Sandy, he could have looked and said, you know what? I'm done with you. Yeah. You're not worthy of my love. You're not worthy to be in my house. But before he even confessed anything, he come out and he hugged him and he kissed him. Folks, that's the faith that the father responds to. He wasn't worthy to come back to his house. He had failed. He had willfully failed. Folks, listen, nobody's going to drag you out of church. Okay? You come in here on your own two feet, guess what? You go out on your own two feet. And you ain't going to be able to blame anybody else. That's right. And you're going to probably get, and there are those that thankfully have, just like the prodigal, that they're in the middle of the mud hole and said, you know what? Right. <laughs> Something's got to change. Right. Something's got to change. But folks, listen, you got to have faith to get out of the mud hole. <laughs> you got to have faith to get out of the pig pen. That's right. And that's what the Father sees. That's what Jesus sees. He says, listen, they want help. Mm -hmm. They want to be restored. They want to have a relationship with me. Yeah. It's not worthiness. It's faith. Right. Amen. Faith to come back to Father's house. Folks, listen, there are those that we've been praying for, that you all have been praying for. Guess what? They need faith to come back to Father's yes. house. Right. And if they come and ask me, Bill, I'd say, listen, it's not because you're worthy. You're not. Right. You have spat in the face right. of God's preachers. You have spat in the face of God's teachers. You have spat in the face of your family. Yeah. And you know what? Based on that, you're not worthy. <laughs> but based on faith, guess what? Yeah. He's already come out with arms extended. Amen. And folks, we'll do the same thing. Hardly, we would extend our arms. There is not one person that if they come back to Father's house, I'd say, listen, <laughs> hit the road. <laughs> yeah. You're not worthy. Because yeah. he doesn't look at worthiness. Right. That's right. He looks at faith. Yes. You've got to have faith to come back to Father's house. But the centurion said, listen, I'm not worthy. But just speak the word and it'll be done. And how do you think his disciples and these other Jews hardly thought about that when he said, you know what? I've not found so great a faith, That's right. not in all of Israel, That's right. yeah. but this Roman, yes. this pagan, <laughs> this occupier, this oppressor, yes. 
He's got more faith than all of you all. But it wasn't about the centurion's worthiness. Right, right. It was about his faith. Amen. Folks, do you know who Christ talks about not being worthy? You know who he talks about not being worthy? Matthew uh, 10, around verse 37, I believe. You all pull your toes back because it might hurt someone. <laughs> Those that loveth yeah. father and mother more than loveth me are not worthy of me. And those that love son or daughter more than they love me are not worthy of me. And those that take up not their cross and follow not after me are not worthy of me. We talk about people being worthy of God, about people being worthy of Christ. You know what, what Christ says? Listen to if somebody else is more important than me, then you're not worthy of me. That's right. Amen. Folks, again, we love our mom and dad. My dad's passed away now, okay? But, Bill, they wasn't more important than him. That's right. Amen. We've loved our three kids, but they're not more important than That's him. That's right. Amen. I love my wife, but she's not more important Amen. than him. Amen. And hardly there are people that, that they just don't get that. They put someone else right. ahead of Christ. That's right. And you know what he says? And listen, if you want to do that, that's fine. You're not worthy of me. And folks, if you're not willing to take up your cross. Now, preacher, can't you lift my cross for me? <laughs> can't you carry it for me? Somebody carried Christ's cross for him, right? If you're not willing to pick up your cross, yeah, right. if you're not willing to follow after him, he says, guess what? You're not worthy of me. That's right. Because something else is more important. Folks, if someone else is more important, you're not worthy. If something else is more important, you're not worthy. Matthew 22. It said that a king made a, a great feast for his son that there was going to be a marriage. And he had sent his servants out to spread the word that everything was ready. He said, but nobody came. And he said that he sent them out again. And said, listen, the, the ox and the fatlings are killed and the dinner's ready. Come. He said, but they begin to make light of it. And one went to his farm and one went to his merchandise. And that it, they took his servants and despitefully treated them and slew them. And it said that the king was wroth. He was angry. It said that he went and destroyed those wicked men and burned up their city. And he sends his servants out again and said, listen, go out into the highways and the byways and, and just find somebody to come. For those that were bidden are not worthy to come to the marriage. Those that were bidden were not worthy to come to the marriage. Jessica, there's a lot of people in that category today. They've been brought to church. They've been exposed to Jesus. They've uh, heard the Bible taught. They've heard it preached. And just like these people, <laughs> Sandy, yeah, I know Christ is coming, but I got other things to do. Folks, I can't water that down. Right, right. <laughs> I'm not going to water it down. Listen, I, I've got other stuff to do. Something else is more important. Those that were bidden were not worthy. Yeah. There are people that when they end up in hell, they are going to reap what they've sowed because they are going to be constantly tormented. You know what? The preacher said this. Mommy and daddy said this. My brothers and sisters said this. My friends told me this, and I wouldn't come. I wouldn't come. But said they went out and they, they, they called the rest of the, those to come, and it said that the, the wedding was furnished with guests, 
But that the king come in and he saw someone, he saw a man that didn't have on a wedding garment. Right. He said, Sir, what are you doing without a wedding garment? Said the man was speechless. He right. couldn't say anything. Folks, listen, it's not just showing up at church. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You gotta have on a wedding garment. Right. What's that wedding garment? Christ. Amen. Amen. Folks, you've got to have on Christ, or guess what? You're going to be escorted from the feast. So that's what he told him. He said, told, told the servant, said, take the man, bind him hand and foot. Joe, not just gently, cordially, that's escort right. him out the door. Bind him hand and foot and cast him into outer darkness. Right. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. Folks, no one's worthy, but guess what? Everyone's been called. Yeah, right. Everyone's been invited. That's right. Amen. But those that have refused the invitation, guess what? They're not worthy. And folks, just showing up at the last minute... Again, if you could just come to church and it magically make you righteous, Becky, that'd be great. <laughs> but that it don't work that way. That's right. Amen. Amen. You gotta have faith. You gotta have faith to come. You gotta have faith to be here. Yes. Then you gotta have faith to take back with you. Yes. <laughs> Folks, this man showed up, and that was good. But guess what? He wasn't ready. That's right. Folks, just come to church. Don't make you ready. But you got to have faith. The centurion had faith. Yes, he Lord, just speak it and it'll right. be done. That's right. He said, according to what you've said, it's done. Yeah. And that his servant was healed that same hour. That's right. Folks, you can be healed this same hour. You can be repaired this same hour. That's you right. can be restored this same Amen. hour, but you got to have faith. Because he responds to faith, not worthy. Danny, come get us a song. Folks, if you have a need today, we'd ask you to come. Again, come in faith. Come in faith. So if everybody would stand... I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth o'er everything, and all of my worry is vain. Living by faith. of life. I'm never alarmed at the overcast skies. The master looks on at the strife. Living by faith. Yes, living by faith. In Jesus above. In Jesus above. Trusting confide. Trusting confide. Lean in his great love. Yes, in his great love. From all from all hearts and in sheltering arms, I'm living by faith, I'm living by faith and feel alone. I know that he safely will carry me through, no matter what evils he ties. Why should I then care though the tempest may blow? 
if Jesus walks close to my side. Living by faith, in Jesus above, trusting the Our troubles will then all be o'er. The Master so gently will lead us away beyond that blessed heavenly shore. Living by faith in Jesus above, in Jesus above, trusting and Mine's free. Uh, announcements, service tonight, 6 o'clock, come back. Uh, Wednesday night, prayer meeting, children's church, and youth group, so remember that. The Bible book for September will be the book of Romans. The book of Romans. Okay. Uh, I think there's 16 chapters there, so half a chapter a day get you through it or plow through them all and then read them again if you want, okay? But the uh, book of Romans, uh, folks, especially young Christians, if you've never read Romans before, uh, read it, meditate on it, study it. It'll help you. It'll help you. Uh, again, homecoming will be the 17th of this month, which will be in two weeks. Uh, so be in prayer for that. Start planning whatever you're going to be cooking. Okay, if you need ideas, come ask. I'll tell you what I like. <laughs> I'm sure Bill will tell you what he likes. Yeah, yeah. But uh, two weeks to plan your menu, all right? So, uh, everybody bring a covered dish. Have a good day. I have some people coming to sing that I'm looking forward to hearing. So, any other announcements? Indian Creek Town Homecoming next Sunday. And Billy Reed, right, is preaching. All right. Enjoy a beautiful day God's made. Come back tonight. If nothing else, I won't call you back seat Sandy, but middle of the pack Sandy, you want to dismiss. <laughs> She's number one. There you go, Sandy. <laughs>